Matt, what are you doing? The show is starting. Sorry, I'm sending a Snapchat to my friends. Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Alyssa. And, and welcome, welcome to, to Under, Under the Rock. Rock. Alyssa, do you use Snapchat? Yeah, I do. I love Snapchat. Many other people enjoy using Snapchat, too. Let's watch Shina Ahmed and Amanda Rotondero's video explaining why Snapchat is so addictive. Social media is a popular and wonderful way to share pictures, memories, events, and ideas. One of the most popular social media apps is Snapchat. With 6 million users, it is a fun and effective platform for communication. But what makes Snapchat so addicting? This is Shaina Ahmed and Amanda Rosendero talking to you about Snapchat. Every day. I use it pretty frequently. <laughs> Do you Snapchat every day? Yes. Because... Um, there's these things that you can get with people called like a streak where like you count where Snapchat counts the number of days you send Snapchats back and forth between people. I love watching other people's Snapchat stories. It's so like fun to like see what they're doing. I mean my life is really boring so I I doubt people like to watch my Snapchat story, but watching other people's is just like oh you get to see what their life is like. Uh I kinda agree with Maggie because Mostly my Snapchat stories of, are just like of my dog, so that's kind of embarrassing sometimes, but yeah. And then there's also these things called like trophies where you can do certain things on Snapchat that'll get you trophies. Like you can, um, there's this one where you'll get like a panda face and it's like, that means you sent 50 Snapchats with like the black and white filter. And it's just really fun like getting the trophies and like doing streaks and stuff. You get to see what other people are, are doing, doing and who's right. hanging out with who. Um, yes. However, Snapchat appeals to a greater audience than just teenagers. I, so I like Snapchat because uh, of essentially who's giving, sending me Snapchats because it's like a constant connection to the people that I want to be constantly connected to. I don't know if it appeals to adults as well as teens. I think it appeals to like a text having adults and teens. Like, yeah. <laughs> Can't be all as amazing as I am. So. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> no. Would that surprise you? Yes. No. Maybe. <laughs> mm, that's like a lot. So. Yeah. So people really love Snapchat, right? People love Snapchat. <laughs> so, what social media do you have? Well, I used to have Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, but now I just have Snapchat. Why do you just have Snapchat? Um, once I got Snapchat, I got kind of bored of Twitter and Instagram. So why do you keep Snapchat, but you don't use Twitter and Instagram anymore? Um, I think it's more fun. You get to send pictures, and you can also like look at people's story or just talk to people individually. Thanks, Emily. No problem, China. <laughs> we found out from interviewing the Glenrock community that Snapchat's popularity is huge because they are constantly adding more filters and features. But will it be able to keep its popularity, or will Snapchat become a fad of the past? Homework is so unnecessary. No, I think it helps even though it's really boring. That's debatable. Let's watch Lizzie Burgoyne and Caitlin Rundle's video on the debate of homework. Homework is a common controversy in many schools today. Many corporations, such as the National Education Association, feel as if homework load should increase every year. But some students feel suffocated by the amount of homework they have on top of studying for tests and quizzes and doing extracurricular activities. So we went around and asked many students and teachers what their opinion of homework was. Sometimes when you have homework, you need to practice like the equations and things that we did in class. Like math homework is important to practice what you learned in class. If it's just um, for the sake of having homework, I don't, I don't believe in just giving homework for the sake of giving homework. If you look at um, Bergen Academies, where they go to school till almost 5 o'clock at night, um, they do give a lot of homework, but they do have a lot of time during the day to work on the homework so it doesn't always go home. They actually work on the homework at school and they can go and get help with it. To master any subject, right, you need to review, you need to read, um, you need to understand. My opinion on homework is, is that it's necessary 
if it's relevant. But I don't think it has to be every night if it's not needed every night. If we don't get through everything or if they understand a topic, maybe they won't get homework that night. It's good in moderation, but when you're given too much, you kind of stress out. I don't get that much homework this year, but I don't really like homework. I think it's kind of a waste of time. Yeah. I think my life would be different without homework because I wouldn't be stressing about it when I get home and I'd be able to like relax and do a lot more stuff if I didn't have it. And Lizzie and I noticed a pattern as the interview went on. We noticed that the teachers tended to be more for homework while the students tended to be more against homework. We went to the guidance department and asked one of our guidance counselors, Mr. Broadhead, what his opinion on the matter was. We were very, very pleased to see that he was very neutral on the matter. I know it's always, um, there's been a lot of conversation about how much homework is important. I think homework is important to uh, the student's education. I don't think it's possible to have some of the higher level classes that we have the AP classes, the honors level classes, without doing some work outside, outside of classroom time. How much homework there should be is up for debate. I fully understand that students do lots of things other than just go to school. I'd be the first one to say, I know some students come home with like three or four hours of homework, which is overwhelming. And I don't think that's what the goal is supposed to be either. It can add a lot to what you do in the classroom. Do you think like the job schedule helps with that though? You know what, I, I thought it did, but then some students, when I would ask, because I especially last year, the first year when they changed the schedule, I asked, you know, did it help? And they said, well, some teachers were like beating the system by posting homework on their site on the new off day of the class. So some students said that they were disappointed because I don't have math today, so they figured, okay, I'm not going to have math homework. But then they go home and they look at the Fusion pages or whatever, and they say, oh, I have an assignment that's due tomorrow, even though I didn't have class today. I mean, I understand. Everybody's got a curriculum to follow, and in some classes you need to cover X amount of work so that students can finish all the core requirements. But there's a reason why the administration puts in the homework free night, and you want to try to respect that as much as you can. The debate on homework is strong and heated on both sides. Most students have accepted that homework is a part of school, while there are still the few who are curious to see what a homework-free lifestyle would lead to. Lizzie and I have done our best to collect the difference of opinions and present them in a way that would please both sides. But in the end, it is up to the students. The students decide how they spend their time and how much effort they put into their work. Hey Alyssa, if you could be any kitchen appliance, what would you be? I'm not sure. What about you, Matt? I would be a spork. <laughs> Let's watch Ian and Mark ask students what kitchen appliance they would be. Hi, I'm Mark. And I'm Ian. This week, we asked our classmates what kind of kitchen appliance they'd want to be. Here are their responses. Okay, so David, if you could be any kitchen appliance, what would you be? A blender. And can you make the sound of that blender? Bzzz. Maybe a spoon, actually. A spoon? Yes. Can you make the sound of that spoon? Against what? Glass or like, start cling? Thanks. So Vincent, if you could be any kitchen appliance, what would you be? I'd be a kitchen whisk. And uh, can you make the sound of a whisk? No, I cannot. Can you try? Whisk. <laughs> Thank you. If you could be a kitchen appliance, what would you be? A whisk. And can you make the sound of a whisk? <laughs> Thank you. And if you could be a kitchen appliance, what would you be? That's a great question. Um, I'd be a toaster. And can you make the sound of a toaster? I don't really think toasters make sounds. You know, when they do like the little ding, like, can you make the sound? And that would be the ding then, like a nice little ding. 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 Like a ding. Thank you. What kind of kitchen appliance would, would you be? A sink. A food processor. And uh, can you make the sound of that sink? Shh. And can you make the sound of the food processor? Shh. <laughs> Thank you. If you could be a kitchen appliance, what would you be? Uh, an oven. Can you make the noise? Ha, hot, hot, hot. 
If you could be a kitchen appliance, what would you be? Uh, my grandma. Can you make the noise of your grandma? Please get out of kitchen. <laughs> Did you know that 46% of 9 to 11 year olds diet often? No, but that's really scary. Self-image is a recurring issue among teens. And almost everyone deals with this problem. Let's watch Emily Chun, Louis Kahn, and Jason Messenbrink's video on self-image. Self-esteem reflects a person's overall subjective emotional evaluation of their own self-worth. Media messages, experiences at home, and your role and status in society can help influence one's self-esteem. We interviewed teachers and students on their opinions and ideas about this issue. Some people base their self-worth on what other people are doing. We talked to Mr. Broadhead on his guidance experience with this problem. And you need to measure what you need to do based on you, not what everybody else is doing, which a lot of people do. They'll look at and say, well, she's taking these classes. I should be taking these classes. She's volunteering here. I should be doing this. Um, everybody's got their own set of um, circumstances, family life, whatever it happens to be. So you have to do what's best for you. Most students, like Gia, feel pressured into fitting to a specific mold. I think that now a lot of teens have self-esteem issues because we have pictured in our minds what we have to be and who we have to be friends with and what we have to act like. And I think that there's definitely a pressure to fit in in high school that doesn't exist necessarily outside of high school. So I think that um, teenagers probably feel that uh, stress to be something more than anybody else. But that idea of self-image and wanting to be like somebody else, I just want students to realize that they can be whoever they want and that once they're out of high school, they'll be allowed to be whoever they want. Ms. Com supports the idea of encouraging students and rewarding them, since it causes students to feel more positive. I'm a big believer in positive reinforcement, so I will make a real sincere big deal about everything they do in a positive way and sometimes one little comment will give them the confidence to do better. If you hear negative comments often enough you tend to believe them and I think the most important thing is to believe in yourself. A big aspect contributing to the growth of these issues is social media. Students, especially women who consume more me mainstream media, place a greater importance on sexiness and overall appearance than those who do not consume as much. Obviously, this is a media-savvy world, and how you look is extremely important. I think so much of the female's self-image is connected to how they look. That's not the case for guys. Many teenagers, males and females, but particularly females, um, when they look in the mirror and look at themselves, they see something different than when somebody else looks at them because we all look at each other in the mirror with a kind of like a discerning eye. The tendency is to be hard on, on yourself. Unfortunately, low self-esteem is much more prevalent in teens than those with high self-esteem. If you are dealing with low self-esteem, you can build positive relationships, focus on things that make you happy, and talk to someone that you can trust. Just be happy with yourself because that's really all that matters. Hey Matt, did you know that Glenrock just got a new bowling coach? I didn't know about that. Let's check out Terrence O'Toole, John Guerin, and Sam Pintel's video as they interview the new bowling coach. Glenrock High School's bowling team got a new coach this year. Coach Rivero started playing when she was in a junior league with her brother. In college, I bowled in an intramural bowling league um, with some of my friends and I currently bowl in a junior senior league with my younger brother. So I always knew that I wanted to get involved in coaching somehow and I know a lot about bowling so I figured why not? I know the bowling program, um, we're trying to make it bigger, better, stronger players so I wanted to, to help um, Ms. Zimmerman out and um, volunteer coaching so try to help her out in any way possible. Um, I'm looking forward to getting to know the players in a different way. When you coach a team, 
um, it's different than teaching. So I wanted to, to get involved in students' lives in a different way other than teaching. This is my first coaching job. Um, I've done coaching back in high school with field hockey, but this is my first um, high school coaching job with bowling. I enjoy that it's a mind sport. It's a mind game and it's very geometric, you could say. So being, you know, having a math mind, having a logic mind, bowling is a really good sport for me. Um, our goal is to have fun, but at the same time, get our averages up. We really want to do well this year. Um, we have so many new players that are excited about coming out for the team and making the best of it. So we're going to have a really good year. That's all the time that we have. Thanks for watching another episode of Under, Under the, the Rock. Rock. I would be a spork. Let's watch Anna and Mark ask students what kitchen appliance they would be. Who came up? Who wrote that? <laughs>